Final Four, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the first game first. Baylor is a five-point favorite over Houston. Uh, flip over my notes here. Look, the big thing that, that Baylor does really, really well, they're number one in the country in three-point percentage. That is insane. Absolutely insane. But all their dudes can shoot it. Mitchell, Teague, um, uh, good gracious. Who am I missing? Um, <laughs> I'm completely blanked. I cannot remember. Uh, Butler, Jared Butler. Good gracious. What am I thinking? Uh, those guys are all ridiculous guards, right? The biggest thing in this game is the difference between what the teams look like and what these stats tell you, right? Analytically, Ken Palm has Baylor as only a one-point favorite in this game. I think the biggest problem is Houston has not seen anything close to what they are going to see with Baylor. Uh, the biggest X factor in the game, I believe, is going to be Matthew Mayer. Uh, he's going to have a big-time matchup advantage. I, I think he has the ability to take over at certain points in this ballgame. I'm going to take Baylor to cover. I think this this round, the Final Four, gets a little chalky. right? I understand that Houston is a two-seed. But if you look at who they've played to get here, it's been what Cleveland State, um, da -da -da -da. Cleveland State, Rutgers, Syracuse, and Oregon State. All double-digit seeds. All have flaws. Baylor is not nearly as flawed as those teams. I, I just think that Baylor is going to be able to overwhelm them. So give me Baylor minus five in this spot, and, and we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Uh, moving on from there, let's talk about Gonzaga and UCLA. UCLA, fantastic story. It's been great. And and everything about I mean, they've beaten really good teams, Alabama, Michigan, both ranked in the top five at the end of the season. However, the way that they got there, Michigan and Alabama combined shot 10 out of 39. 10 out of 39 from three-point range in their two games. On top of that, they shot 17 out of 36 from the free-throw line. That's a, I don't think free-throw defense is a thing. I don't expect Gonzaga to be missing free-throws. I also don't think that UCLA will be able to match up with them. They were able to match up with Michigan. They were able to match up with Alabama. But all of the teams that UCLA beat to get to this point were all flawed in some way. There was something that UCLA could take advantage of. With Gonzaga, there's nothing. This is the best team that I've seen in 30 years. They are unreal. Like The way that they play, they make everything look effortless. I've talked about it for weeks now. Everything is so seamless. There are no issues with this basketball team at all. I, I just don't see where UCLA will be able to find any kind of an edge in this game. And the only thing they could do to cover the 14, not even to win. I don't think they can do anything to win. To cover the 14, you do what you've done and, and you slow it down. I mean, you're, you're talking walk it up the floor, take 20 seconds before you take your first shot, that kind of stuff. Drag drag, drag the game down. I don't know that Gonzaga will allow them to do that. Gonzaga's tempo is even faster than Alabama's. And, you know, with overtime, they ended up beating Alabama 88-78. to In this spot, I fully expect Gonzaga to to cover the 14, and, and I think their team total over 80 also hits as well. Those are my three bets on the Final Four for Saturday. And then we'll be back in plenty of time for Sunday's, or sorry, for uh, uh, Monday's national championship game, which I think will be Gonzaga and Baylor, which is what we've been talking about since the beginning of this season. These have been the two best teams all year. It is absolutely fitting that they will be the two teams in the national championship game. A um, few more notes on it. Uh, UCLA, uh, I just, uh, looking at, you know, Jaime Jaquez, uh, Tiger Campbell, Johnny Juzang, like these are all players that they would all have to absolutely just go off the same way kind of Austin Rivers did. And Oklahoma still, with Austin Rivers absolutely going off, still could not stay within, you know, 15 and a half of them. They, they got beat by 16. I, I think this one's worse. I think UCLA is not as good as Oklahoma was even on that day. I think Drew Timmy, I think that uh, Kispert, I think Jalen Suggs, that team 
is just so much better rounded than UCLA. This has been an incredible story. I love uh, the Hep Cronin story. I love all of this. I love the fact that their best players are on the bench with injuries, and, and it's this ragtag bunch that's coming out and playing like this. But I, I think this is where the buck stops. So that is going to be the show for today. It's only 60 minutes long, not, not too, too much. But we certainly appreciate you guys for coming in and hopping in with us. Leave your picks in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. We would love to hear from you. Let us know your opinion on, on all of these do you think Baylor covers? Do you think uh, Gonzaga covers? You know, what we want to know your thoughts. Also, your thoughts on who the next North Carolina coach is going to be and who the next Texas Tech coach is going to be. We uh, we want to hear from you. So head over to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. And hopefully, hopefully, all of your tickets cash this weekend. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.